Yeah, hi guys, uh, I wanted to review the lab report or lab 2 uh, which talks about how to identify the owner of uh, every public IP address between you and the domain uh, cnn.com So first of all, we need to find the IP addresses between me and the domain uh, cnn so how do we do this? Um, we can see uh, screenshots for exercise one. So what we used is the trace route, trace route dash i www.cnn.com. So let's uh, go to the lab um, two explanation. Uh, okay, so this lab talks about, first of all, the TCP three-way handshake. So where, how, how is this uh, um, communication established? And um, then it talks about uh, what uh, is uh, important, no, why, why the three-way handshake is important. And then the tools we use for networking. One of the tools is Traceroute, okay? So in Linux, this is what we're using, Traceroute-i, then we put cnn.com. Uh, this, in this way, we can find all the IP addresses between me and the domain Google, okay? So I can show you this, uh, how it is done in Ubuntu, but uh, already I have a screenshots. Okay, this is the wrong file. Okay, I have a screenshots. So what I did was I uh, pasted the command trace route dash I, then the domain. And I did this in the terminal and the output of the command was all the IP addresses between me and CNN. So what else did the question ask for? The question asks for, let's see, okay. The question asks for, uh, Identify the owner of every public IP address between you and the domain. So let's see how we found these owners. So we use the command who is. So this command, it means who is. Then we put the first IP address. Okay. So why did we use the command who is? because it's one of the tools that we use who is tool and it is used for okay this is for window windows but for linux we just type who is dash h is if we want help but we don't need to press dash h we can just put the domain google okay so who is will show you the information about the IP address that you used, okay? So when we put who is then the IP address, the first IP address, so it gives you the information about the IP address. يعني, for example, يعني هنا we have uh, يعني the net name. Uh, we know this is an I A N A. I A N A is means it's Internet Assigned Numbers uh, Authority. Uh, I think يعني, you always get this. Uh, you have to go through it. So the organization name. So this is the owner. Okay, so this is just information about the IP address. You can also search what IANA means in Google. 
I A N A Okay, and you can just learn more about what this is. Okay, so in this way we solve question one by just typing the command who is for each IP address and getting all the information that we need. This is also IANA, and this is no surprise, Yanni. And this is the city. Los Angeles in the US here also we have Los Angeles in the US and similarly for this IP address all right and also this IP address is different this IP address is the IP address of Qtel, like it's some place, uh, like it's uh, the some internet provider. Um, like in Qatar, we have Uridu, but before it was named as Qtel, and this also should be no surprise. So this is the information about this IP address, and also. These IP addresses are also in Qatar, also like uh, held by Qtel. So we will find Qtel here, Qtel here. All right. This is also about Qtel. And this is the final destination. This one is yani, the final uh, IP address uh, that takes me to CNN. Okay. And uh, it is in America. It is uh, in the US. And it's the organization name is Fastly. So is this a surprise or not? Let's check. So it's a cloud provider and it's a network edge. And uh, yani it, it could uh, it could be supporting like, for example, it pro it provides a uh, OK. No, these are different providers so fastly is a provider i believe okay uh, anyways uh, okay we finished the who is uh, let's see the other question uh, using wireshark uh, we want to open the file okay this is the file and we want to analyze this file okay so we want to analyze this file this is a wireshark wireshark file capture uh, and like we're trying to identify the client that initiates the conversation so what we do is we see the t the three-way handshake protocol and we see that The first person to initiate this conversation is the first one. It's 131. Dot. All right. And, and we can also find this by finding the three-way handshake. Look, yani we studied the three-way handshake. And we know that the initiator, the, the, the client who initiates, always has a sequence number zero. Here, it, it's, it's not necessarily zero, but uh, the Wireshark application gives you the relative sequence number. So the starting sequence number will always be zero. So here we find the sequence number zero and scene. Then scene ACK, then ACK. 
So it follows sin, then sin ak, then ak. So we know that the first sin is the one who initiated, and um, we can see who who is the source, and this is the IP address for the source. Okay, why? Because they are the source sending scene at sequence equals zero. But this sequence number is not necessarily zero. Actually, it could be not zero, but relatively it's zero. Okay. Use the first two packets to identify the server is going to be contacted. List the common name and three IP addresses that can be used for reaching the server. Okay, so how do we know what server we are uh, contacting? First, we look at the first um, packet and we can find here that it is not encrypted. It says google.com. And we can also, um, this information is copied from the second packet in the info column. So we have the info column. Info column. If we copy this column, um, we're going to find the name www.google. Okay. It's, it can also be identified in the packet bytes plane. This is the packet bytes plane. And the three IP addresses are also copied from the information uh, section. Okay. So we can find them in here. Yani in the information section. But it's not here uh, right now. What are the port numbers involved in the three-way handshake? Simply, we can just find the port number. Yani if we press on the TCP, yani, uh, TCP packet. TCP packet. We can just find the port number. It's really, uh, yani, it's really clear. So this is the protocol, and this is the port number. So I believe. Where's the TCP? Okay. Okay. Here. Here. One one four three. Port number is talking to eighty. So 80, it's the HTTP protocol, HTTP, I think. Okay, so here's the source port, uh, 1142. And the destination port is 53. Uh, this is uh, this is for the first one, but we want the, uh, the TCP uh, three-way handshake. So the destination here is 80, and then 80 talks to the source which is in this case is the destination but then uh, the destination uh, is now the source and talks to 80. so the the ports are 1143 and 80. the source the first the source here is 1143 the source here is 80. thus it starts with 1143. so 1143 and 80 in the three-way handshake protocol so we just we can find this in the information here from from this panel all right and um, this is just an explanation to what i said Okay, so exercise three. First of all, it asks us to capture live traffic from our computer. Of course, we're going to use Wireshark to do this. And then we are going to capture the menu to save the live traffic. So first of all, we want to capture the data, then visit a live website. Like we're going to use YouTube for our case. Then we are going to stop capturing the data after the TCP three-way handshake is established. Then we want to observe the communication, um, okay, uh, and because we're going to have a large amount of network traffic, we're going to focus on uh, uh, using filters like, for example, this filter, 
Okay. So first of all, we're going to open Wireshark. First of all, how do we open Wireshark? We type the command sudo Wireshark. Then we type the password and this opens the Wireshark window. Then uh, we're going to press the, the capture. But before we do this, oh, okay. First, we're going to press the capture button. The capture button is this button the the shark fin then uh, we're gonna open the firefox browser then we're gonna visit youtube and then the website is closed and then after the website is closed then we end the capture okay we just stop by pressing this one and this is the traffic from my computer to YouTube so if we keep searching here we're gonna find fin this is for when I close the website but first it starts with scene and then CNAC and then okay so now we have a lot of traffic right so what we want to do is use a filter okay First of all, we want to find the uh, we want to find the YouTube uh, IP address. Okay. First of all, we use the filter TCP contains YouTube. Okay. We type TCP contains YouTube here. TCP contains YouTube. Then we're gonna search for YouTube. This is the server YouTube, and then we're going to search for the IP address. So here we find this IP address, 142.250.180.46. We copy this IP address, then we use another filter. We use a filter to filter out the IP address. So IP.address equals 142.250, this one. And then, and then now it's very clear the TCP three-way handshake is here. Sin, Sinac, and Ak. So the sequence here is zero or relative sequence. And this is uh, uh, Ak1, then Seek1, and Ak1, right? So this is a three way handshake between the, uh, resembles the three way handshake between YouTube and the virtual boxes IP address. Okay? And that's all. Uh, then in exercise four, we want to uh, scan our computer to uh, find the operating system and then identify the open ports and the server name running behind each port. Okay, so first of all, we want to find our IP address, our private IP address. How can we find it? Uh, simply in the command, the cmd command in the windows, we will pro we will type um, uh, um, we will type ip config. I think the by scanning by running ip config command on Windows. So, yani if we open the cmd and type IP config, we're gonna get this output, okay? So we use this IP address 192.196 because this is our private IP address, okay? Then we copy it and then we wanna scan the IP address. How do we scan it to find the uh, operating system and uh, all the information? We type this command, sudo nmap-o, this dash o, okay, let's, this dash o will be used to uh, enable the, uh, enable the operating system scan. Okay, let's see. I mean the uh, operating system scan. So the nmap tool is used for host discovery, port scanning, and OS detection. Uh, okay. 
So we will find, see the example. Why did we type dash O? Because it enables OS det detection. Okay. So we are going to use this, this one. But we're going to type sudo first. Uh, because we want to uh, bypass the... Okay. So sudo nmap-o and my IP address. And then we're going to get all the information we need after typing the password for sudo. Uh, okay, so here is the host. Okay, the port. We have one, two, three, four, five ports open. So these are vulnerabilities. Yani, this is why we use this because we want to find all the vulnerabilities of the network and by finding the open ports in the network and we're gonna see what ports are open so this is the ports that are open and this is the service that the port uh, gives us okay so and also we can find the os this is okay the OS detection performed, the operating system is okay, so I'm not sure if it shows in the screenshot. Ah, okay, uh, running Oracle virtual box because I did this using the virtual box and QME, QEMU. Q -E uh, so the OS is Oracle virtual box and QEMU. So we have two. Uh, so, okay, so briefly, um, Port 135 services the Microsoft Remote Procedure Call and Port 139 services the NetBIOS SSN and the Port 445 services the Microsoft DS okay and Port 808 services the CC proxy server which supports HTTP in this case and port 5357 refers to the web server on devices API WS DAPI. Sorry, I mean, the names are hard to pronounce. WS DAPI. Anyway, uh, and the OS scan returns that Oracle Virtual Box and QEMU are used, and they are open source virtualization and vir vir machine emulators. Uh, all right, and if we want to scan another IP address, this is the public IP address. This is the uh, 53 and 80 TCP ports are open. They service the domain and HTTP. And I think this is the IP address of the virtual box. All right. And of course, it's using the virtual box. And that's it. This is lab two. Uh, using the network tools, what did we use? We used the nmap, the Wireshark, and the trace route, and the who is. So these are very useful tools that can be used for uh, um, used by TCP to negotiate and start a TCP session between two computers. Ah, okay, this is the TCP three-way handshake. This is the this is the importance of the TCP three-way handshake. So it is useful for port scanning and implementation of firewall for intrusion prevention uh, and uh, DOS attacks, DCP SIN flood, and a lot of other different attacks, right? Could be uh, exploit also for, okay. And so this is the three-way handshake. I already explained the three-way handshake in another video. 
And this is when we want to close the three-way handshake. So fin, ak, fin, ak, okay. Okay, so this is a very uh, quick review of the TCP three-way handshake and the uh, basic tools for networking. Uh, and the Wireshark is a very, very important tool. Uh, 